So we're going to take a ride out west on my beautiful Harley Davidson Street Bob. So let's uh, roll the intro. We'll get this thing fired up and uh, get moving. So it's supposed to get up to 81 degrees today. What time is it now? It's 10 o'clock. It's supposed to get up to 81 by about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's perfect riding weather. A little bit warm. Maybe I should have brought my lighter jacket, but I got the vents open. So check it out. There's a, I had to get a new GPS unit because my old one that I used to ride with all the time, just it, it wouldn't update or I could update it, but I just don't have a PC to update it to the latest firmware and the maps and everything. So I just said, screw it and uh, bought a new one. Actually, I like this one a lot better. Anyways, let's get going, shall we? So as many of you already know, I've been waiting quite some time for my coastal kit to show up from Harley-Davidson so I could put everything on my bike. I'll throw a couple of pictures up here of uh, what what it looks like, you know, on the uh, Harley Davidson soft tail standard and the street bob. It's got this really cool Harley Davidson fairing, which I'm a big fan of. I'm gonna paint it to match the color of the bike. It's gonna look pretty sweet. You guys notice how nice the display on this thing is? Unfortunately, it's not. <laughs> it's not showing me actually being on a road right now. Huh? Strange. But the coastal kit comes with. The fairing, obviously that's the big part, and it also comes with a different seat with a nice uh, nice two-up. You know, it's got a passenger seat for a passenger on it, obviously. It's got different foot pegs for it. They're like MX-80 foot pegs or something like that. I probably won't use those. The, uh, the handlebar setup for it, it's got a four inch riser with moto bars that are more straight across and they sit lower uh, on the bike right here. Ah, there we go. Now it's showing that I'm on the road. I guess it just had to update or catch up with whatever the hell I'm doing, even though it's not showing my speed now. Lost satellite reception. You know, Garmin, so far you're you're not impressing me, you know, with, with what you're doing here. So after I get the coastal kit and get it all bolted on and, and put together and everything, I've got the cruise control module and the wiring is actually sitting down at the dealership waiting to be installed, but I'm gonna have that done. Uh, when I take it in for my 1,000 mile service, the first service, well now it's saying I'm doing 58 miles per hour. <laughs> but after that, I think I want to, Hartley Davidson's got these parts that are solid brass or, yeah, they're solid brass. They're kind of expensive, but I think they would look pretty cool on this bike. But I was thinking about getting them and they kind of have that tarnished look to them. And I was actually thinking about getting them and polishing the brass to make it somewhat shiny. Not too shiny though, but somewhat. So I want to do the uh, the derby cover, maybe the timing cover, and the uh, the levers. Get those in that that Harley Davidson brass collection, whatever it's called. I think it would look pretty cool, and it would go with the color of the bike really nice. So beyond that, um, saddlebags. I want to get a decent set of saddlebags, something that I can carry my camera equipment around in. I do a lot of you know taking pictures and shooting video and stuff like that that I really enjoy doing, but there's just nowhere to store it on this bike and I don't want to carry it all in my backpack. Sorry if my voice is kind of jumpy, this road's a bit rough, but I don't want to carry it all in my backpack because if I do have a crash, I don't need something, you know, impaling my spine when I go down. So the saddlebags would be a nice addition to this bike. Probably get some, I don't even know, I think you can get those ones that look like leather, but they're, they're hard. And they have some with locks on them, so I want to kind of get some of those. And then after that, I just want to get like a short sissy bar, something that I can, you know, strap an additional backpack to. It'd be pretty cool. Okay, now it's reading correctly. So also kind of the point of this ride today and going out to this old abandoned park is to test out a new camera that I bought. 
it's called the Sony ZV-1 and it's kind of all the rage right now amongst all the uh, the YouTube content creators like you know they like to call themselves I know we all kind of are but I don't like to call myself a content creator I just I'm just a dude on a bike making videos but anyways I bought this camera I pre-ordered it the day before it released and I received it three days later from B&H Photo and uh, at first I wasn't wasn't at all impressed with it because I like to have full manual control over my cameras when I'm shooting photography and video you know I'll run ND filters I like to set up the the aperture the ISO everything myself and you just can't I mean you can kind of do that on the ZV-1 but it has its limitations I guess I'm just too used to working with actual real cameras and when you start to take features and you know the ability to change things away from a camera I feel like I'm kind of I don't know down stepping a little bit like downgrading the camera but however I've been playing around with this little camera and it's really actually kind of pretty neat uh, it's got this feature on it called background defocus and it's a special button right on top of the camera that what it does is it opens the aperture wide up and it speeds up the shutter speed that way it doesn't overexpose the image and it allows you to basically defocus the background of things which is a really really nice look when you're doing filming and stuff like that Okay, well here it is. This is the Sony ZV-1. This thing is like all the freaking rage on YouTube right now as far as new cameras are concerned because this was created specifically for content creators. <laughs> you know, those people that like to uh, stick a camera in their face all the time and post videos on YouTube, which is cool, but that's not me. <laughs> let's uh, make sure I'm not forgetting anything and let's go exploring, shall we? Uh, yeah. All right, well, this is Eshba Park, the abandoned Eshba Park. Huh. Not exactly sure what this place is. A uh, dangerous fish screen, no trespassing. Uh, whatever that means, whatever kind of business they got going on back there. But it's a pretty cool place. I guess, you know, kids probably used to go swimming down here. Uh, last time I was here, I was probably four or five years old, so it's been a long time. Oh gosh, 40 years ago, but this used to be a pretty cool place for families to come and, and have picnics and things. We're going to go walking back here and uh, see what's left of it. As you can see, let's see, right over there, that fireplace structure. That probably used to be a feature of the park when it was still open. Probably had a, uh, you know, picnic benches around it and people can come out here at night and have a fire and, you know, cook weenies and all that good family stuff. But it's now since abandoned. You can't even, I mean, you could walk back there, but the weeds are so high. They're about four feet tall. So let's go over here. Wow. Well, that's pretty cool looking. I don't know if you can guys see that on the camera, but look at that. Look at those plants down in there. Just going with the flow. Pretty cool. Sure it would be cool to take off all this gear and just jump right in there. Holy crap. <laughs> I just leaned on that and look at it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's not safe. Moving right along. And I think if I lived over here in this area, I'd probably uh, probably be over here quite a bit. Now right there, I think that's one of those things that used to have a plug-in in it, and there's probably park benches back over in here uh, to have picnics at, but obviously they're long since gone. <laughs> 
This is no diving. <laughs> uh, that's definitely left over from the old days. So this is the place where uh, people used to come up here and, and swim down in there. I have vague memories of doing it myself. Pretty sad. They should actually clean this place up and open it up again. Huh. But on top of this thing, it's got all kinds of uh, people scratch their names and initials and, you know, Jenny loves Billy crap and all that stuff in this bridge. It's kind of neat. What does this say? Danger. Steel plate. I like stuff like this because you can look and see where it like it used to be the uh, you know the dividing lines for the lanes in the road. Hasn't been used in a long, long time though. But that would be a really cool spot. Park a motorcycle down there and take a picture of it. But <sighs> this is the other side of the bridge. Long since reclaimed by Mother Nature. That, I don't remember what the heck that used to be. It's probably part of an older bridge. Because there's another piece on the other side over there. Stuff like this, I find it really, really cool. You know, just exploring abandoned places and things. That's probably where that other side of that pass connects to here. But, I don't know what it is, man. It's it maybe, like I said, just getting older. <laughs> finding more time to actually go outside and enjoy you know things like this but it's really nice this used to be one of the driving paths across from one side of the park to the other and it is just covered in dirt and weeds and everything else pretty cool little swamp area down there is that all there is to this place i thought there'd be more like abandoned picking picnic tables and all kinds of other cool stuff back here, but I'm not seeing anything over there. So I guess we'll go up this embankment here, get on this road, and see what we can see. Man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Walking around and around out here in full riding gear is pretty warm. Good thing I brought some water. Getting tasty. <laughs> you know, it's funny, this, uh, when I was thinking about making this video, I'm like, man, this is just going to be a selfish video, but it's all good. I had to get out here and actually bring this camera out here and do some real world testing. And the only real way to do that is to, uh, actually record and then upload a video onto YouTube just to see how the footage looks. Now what I'm seeing, just staring back at myself here, it looks okay. I mean, I can't really tell. Although I'm sure that the uh, top of my helmet is way overexposed, but what are you going to do about that? It's a white helmet. So, switch it to this side. Yeah, still overexposed along with some of the sky back there. Man, it is freaking hot. <laughs> It's a nice place to come and do stuff like this, though, just because there's really nobody here. So, that's nice. Honestly, don't know how some guys do this. Walk around with the, the camera out at the end of their arm and pointing it at themselves for extended periods of time. I'm sure their arm's got to get tired. But... How's this look? It's got a nice blurry background. I think so. Looks pretty blurry. That is called bokeh. For those of you not in the know. <laughs> or bokeh. It's basically a, a camera terminology for 
how nice and blurry the background is back here. You got your subject matter, obviously, you know, up front, center, and then the, uh, the background. A little bit of separation, so you're separating your subject from your environment. Not that I'm a professional, I'm a noob when it comes to camera stuff, but... There are a lot of hobbies that you can get into that are just a rabbit hole, that are extremely deep. Um, I did that with many, many things over the years, you know, starting with cars and, and then guitars. You know, I even had a run and run when I was younger with uh, like radio controlled cars and model building and, you know, just all kinds of stuff. <sighs> and then later on in life, uh, when I moved back up here to Washington, I, um, I got into guns pretty big and I had a substantial gun collection. Now I know there's probably some guys out there like, ooh, guns icky and stuff, but that's, you know, to me, guns were tools and they were a hobby. Um, I like to do a lot of target shooting. I do have a concealed carry permit and I do carry a weapon on me. Um, but in my opinion, my honest opinion, you know, I owned uh, AR-15s, many, many of them. And a lot of people like to call those things like assault rifles. And I don't see them as assault rifles. My, personally, I don't own any assault rifles. Uh, all of my guns were for, uh, you know, either target shooting or for defense. And even then, it was really only one weapon. And that was the one that I was carrying on me at the time that I considered for defense. Anyways, um, talking about other hobbies and things. Let's see, what else have I got? Oh, well... Here recently, within the last year and a half, two years, it's been cameras. And I've just uh, gone down this huge rabbit hole of cameras and things. And what's really nice about it, to me anyways, is that the fact that I can use these things all the time. Where something like, like shooting and stuff like that really didn't... Uh, it required you to always go somewhere. Uh, a lot of times you have to have a permit or permission to go on somebody's property to do it. And it was just a huge pain in the butt. I still have some guns left. I just don't go shooting anymore. It's just falling out of interest for me. But, oh, hey, birdie. Anyways, the whole rabbit hole. Motorcycling is the same way. You go down this big rabbit hole of bikes that interest you, things you like. Um, you know, and you end up spending a lot of money on it. But motorcycles are also really cool because of the fact that you don't have to go anywhere to a... Uh, to do that hobby. As a matter of fact, when you're doing that hobby, you are going somewhere. So it's really pretty cool. Uh, cameras is the same thing. Uh, just, you know, the little GoPro, that's a camera. Uh, what do I do? I ride my motorcycle. I like riding my motorcycle. What do I do? I like filming stuff. So, you know, GoPro, motorcycle, win-win. <sighs> Man, it's been a great day so far. If you guys are still here in this part of the video, I want to say thank you to everybody, all my subscribers that watch my content, that watch my videos. <laughs> I'm not a content creator. I make videos. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and uh, leaving comments and everything. Because this isn't exactly easy work. Sometimes I get burnt out and just don't want to do it anymore, but uh, I enjoy filming things and editing. I actually enjoy that most of anything right now in life other than writing and stuff like that but i think this has been a pretty decent test of this camera we'll get it back to the house and edit some footage and uh, see how it looks so anyways i thank you guys for watching the video i know it's a bit out of the normal for you know typical stuff but uh sometimes i just don't feel like creating a video about motorcycles and motorcycles alone got to mix it up a little bit everybody out there ride safe have a good day and we will talk to you later i'm gonna go over here and drink some water catch my breath from all this walking around and sweating we'll see you on the next video